This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. On day number 31 of the government shutdown, it's time for the African American scene on WPSL, brought to you by Howard Insurance every Wednesday night at about this time right now. And uh, Howard Insurance happens to be the sponsor of this show, and it's hosted by the one and only Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you on a Wednesday night. Every now and then, I throw out uh, a topic that I plan to cover on my talk show on Wednesday nights, and today was one of those days, and I got a pretty good response. And I'm going to focus on this topic for the whole hour, hopefully. My topic is, is capitalism failing us? Hmm. Is capitalism failing us? I got a, a, a variety of responses, all very thoughtful, mind you, and, and uh, one of the responses I receive from uh, Miss o- O'Shaughnessy, she reminded me of something that I had heard from Nick Hanauer. If you're not familiar with Nick Hanauer, he's a venture capitalist that has made billions of dollars. And he's going to give you, he's not some wild-eyed liberal who is opposed to capitalism. He is a capitalist. And I thought it only appropriate to hear what Nick Hanauer has to say about how money is generated. So pay attention, and then at the end of this, I'll be back to take your questions, 3401590. It is astounding how significantly one idea can shape a society and its policies. Consider this one. If taxes on the rich go up, job creation will go down. This idea is an article of faith for Republicans and seldom challenged by Democrats and has indeed shaped much of the economic landscape. But sometimes the ideas that we are certain are true are dead wrong. Consider that for thousands of years, humans believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. It's not, and an astronomer who still believed that it was would do some pretty terrible astronomy. Likewise, a policymaker who believes that the rich are job creators and therefore should not be taxed will do equally terrible policy. I have started or helped start dozens of companies and initially hired lots of people. But if there was no one around who could afford to buy what we had to sell, all those companies and all those jobs would have evaporated. That's why I can say with confidence that rich people don't create jobs, nor do businesses large or small. Jobs are a consequence of a circle of life-like feedback loop between customers and businesses and only consumers can set in motion this virtuous cycle of increasing demand and hiring. In this sense, an ordinary consumer is more of a job creator than a capitalist like me. That's why when business people take credit for creating jobs, it's a little bit like squirrels taking credit for creating evolution. It's actually the other way around. Anyone who's ever run a business knows that hiring more people is a course of last resort for capitalists. It's what we do if and only if rising consumer demand requires it. And in this sense, calling ourselves job creators isn't just inaccurate, it's disingenuous. That's why our existing policies are so upside down. When the biggest tax exemptions and the lowest tax rates benefit the richest, all in the name of job creation, all that happens is that the rich get richer. Since 1980, the share of income for the top 1% of Americans has more than tripled, while our effective tax rates have gone down by 50%. If it was true that lower taxes for the rich and more wealth for the wealthy led to job creation, today we would be drowning in jobs. (laughs) And, thank you. (laughs) And yet, unemployment and underemployment is at record highs. 
Another reason that this idea is so wrong-headed is that there can never be enough super rich people to power a great economy. Somebody like me makes hundreds or thousands of times as much as the median American, but I don't buy hundreds or thousands of times as much stuff. My family owns three cars, not 3,000. I buy a few pairs of pants and shirts a year like most American men. Occasionally, we go out to eat with friends. I can't buy enough of anything to make for the fact that millions of unemployed and underemployed Americans can't buy any new cars, any clothes, or enjoy any meals out. Nor can I make up for the falling consumption of the vast majority of middle class families that are barely squeaking by, buried by spiraling costs and trapped by stagnant or declining wages. Here's an incredible fact, that if the typical American family still retained the same share of income that they did, in 1970, they'd earn like $45,000 more a year. Imagine what our economy would be like if that were the case. Significant privileges have come to people like me, capitalists, for being perceived as job creators at the center of the economic universe and the language and metaphors we use to defend the current economic and social arrangements is telling. It's a small jump from job creator to the creator. This language obviously wasn't, <laughs> this language was not chosen by accident. And it's only honest to admit that when somebody like me calls themselves a job creator, we're not just describing how the economy works, but more particularly, we're making a claim on status and privileges that we deserve. Speaking of special privileges, the extraordinary differential between the 15% tax rate that capitalists pay on carried interest, dividends, and capital gains and the 35% top marginal rate on work that ordinary Americans pay, it's kind of hard to justify without a touch of deification. We've had it backwards for the last 30 years. Rich people like me don't create jobs. Jobs are a consequence of an ecosystemic feedback loop between customers and businesses. And when the middle class thrives, businesses grow and hire, and owners profit. That's why taxing the rich to pay for investments that benefit all, such a fantastic deal for the middle class and the rich. So ladies and gentlemen, here's an idea worth spreading. In a capitalist economy, the true job creators are middle class consumers. And taxing the rich to make investments that make the middle class grow and thrive is the single shrewdest thing we can do for the middle class, for the poor, and for the rich. Thank you. Wow. Now, put, put, put your arms around that now, because that was no liberal speaking. That was a very rich man who has benefited from all of the maneuvers that have been created to help make rich people richer. And he's telling you in his richness, it is wrong. It is out of balance. I noticed he kind of really shot down, trickle down economics. Well, it doesn't work. Oh. Listen, I have said this. I have a friend who is, it is the Bible, and he's probably listening tonight. And he and I have had rigorous debates about this. And, and, and this is what I told him a long time ago. If we had never tried it, and somebody came to me with that idea. The idea sounds plausible. It would be worth a try. But we've tried it. And the missing ingredient to why it doesn't work is called greed. The people that get the money don't trickle it down, they put it in their pocket. They, they may buy a yacht or another house, but that, that money ain't trickling down to Joe Schmo, middle class guy. Did you hear what he said? Now this was, that, that TED talk was from a couple of years ago and I want you to understand, that TED talk was banned by conservatives. They were so upset with him for giving that TED talk about the truth of capitalism, it, it, it got banned. 
So now that my conservative friends who listen to me every week and call up and argue with me about things like this, what's your argument now? It is, we have a call on line one. Name is Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Yes, Rudy. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. Listen, what would you suggest? I'm open-minded. I'm not saying trickle-down works. I'm not saying anything works, but it seems like nothing's worked until just recently. What What's working recently? Well, you got l- the lowest unemployment rate ever, correct, or am I wrong? I, I don't know about ever. I don't know about that. Well, I'm in the last 30 years. That's forever in my lifetime, but you know what I was saying. Oh, okay, so. all right. And, you know, the the, the, the GDC is, is is absolutely phenomenal from what I've, what I've heard. I mean, you know. Not anymore. It's gone down? It's going. It is, it is dropping like a rock right now. Well, I wasn't aware of that. But what would you suggest? Give me some ideas. Okay, well, I don't know. What one of the one of the things that that I I suggest is that there there has to be some limitations because look, Alan Greenspan made the mistake of loosening the levers on banks. He it was his theory because he's a conservative that if he loosened the levers and the regulations on banks, they would control and regulate themselves in the, pr- in the process of making money. As they buried everybody else. <laughs> yeah, well, and, 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 he admits, and he admits he made a mistake because he didn't count on the fact, the greed factor. Our capitalism system, Jeff, the problem is greed. We have CEOs who make 20 times, uh, 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 271 times the amount of money that their They're employees. Worth. Yeah, right. Okay. Here's a, <laughs> Sorry, here's, I agree. <laughs> okay. here's, here's another example, okay? I, uh, I'm, I was, I'm doing some open enrollment for, for Medicare, and I had a lady come by my table whose mother just relocated here to Florida. And she's from Mexico, okay? Right. And and she said, asked me if I could help get her mother in a new plan because she relocated, and I said, I can. And then she proceeded to tell me that the Zarelto that she bought for her mother in Mexico mm-hmm. was in the same bottle and the same format with the same name on it, and it cost one tenth of the cost that it cost in America. That's 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 horrible. That should not be. Why is that being? Jeff, do we allow do we allow the freaking pharmaceuticals to do whatever the hell they want? There, there you go, Jeff. Now you're asking me what part of the, the solution is. The solution is you have to have some regulation because, well, because Jeff, it, that is, yeah. you're right. That's insane. That is insane. That's <laughs> absolutely insane. Yeah. I got, you know, you and I don't agree on a lot of things, but we agree on that one. Yeah. And, and so you know, you're, the same exact model, the same exact everything you can buy it in Mexico. Well, get me on the Internet because I ain't buying jack from these people. Well, you and, know? And, and listen, it, that, that's not only true in Mexico. It's also true in Canada. And then I, I have a very good friend who lives here who is has several commercial properties in India. And his wife has high blood pressure. And right. this, and I swear to God, what I'm getting ready to tell you again is true. My friend told me he goes, he has to go to uh, India twice a year to see about his commercial properties. Right. He goes to India... He buys his wife's drugs in India, a whole six month supply for what it cost him for one month supply in the United States. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm not making that up. You you can well, look why, at it. What, what what we should do is start 
selling the pharmaceutical companies, yeah, you charge whatever you want. In the United States, we're going to order ours off the Internet, and we're going to get it from Mexico, or we're going to get it from whoever's got the best price. Jeff, if you remember, when I first moved here, uh, there were a couple of these little shops along Port St. Lucie Boulevard. Correct. Or, or, you remember that? I do remember uh, P-A-R. Uh, am I not allowed to say a business name? I won't, but, I, you know, Park Avenue, you know, had that little little apothecary down there, you know. You could order so, your drugs from Canada. Those yep. are, They're all gone, aren't they? Yeah, I wonder what happened there. Well, because that's that's the capitalism system in America at work. The the big guys crush those people so that they cannot offer drugs at a discount. That mm. that's a problem. And and you know what? We're that the ones that we're the ones that's getting hurt by that. We're you selling this. Talk about that, and you know, I mean, the way this thing's going with, you know, Dems don't want to talk to Republicans, Republicans don't want to talk to Dems. What the hell's going on, man? You, nobody wants to talk to nobody. Why, you know, you stopped everybody's paycheck? Stop them congressmen's paycheck. Stop them senators' paychecks. What the hell are we doing wrong, Rudy? Well, uh, what, what, what has happened, Jeff, is if, if you think back, there's always been differences between Republicans and Democrats. But some of the best laws that we've passed ever is when Democrats and Republicans are in the room and they can synthesize their ideas and come up with a piece of legislation. I agree. We have, I agree. We have now become so tribal that only yep. the words of our tribe count and anything that comes from the other side is a lie. No, that's not true. And it was, I mean, that's true, but you know, that's you know, that that's that's both that's crap that everybody's put on our heads. Yes, it yes, it is, uh, and and and, and, and and so now yep. we we're stuck. So and now it's all now we're in a game of one upsmanship. That's where we are right now. Uh, oh, this is so. It's like a, it's like schoolyard bullshit. You know it, what I'm talking it, about? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know? And it, yes, it, it is. You know, I'm, the, I'm the big bully in, in the neighborhood, or I'm this, or I'm that, or I'm doing this, or, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's gotten to the point, Rudy, I tell you what, something's going to happen, man. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just, it's just, just something's got to happen. Something, you know? I, I agree with you, Jeff. I agree. You know? We've got to do something. We, we really do, because we, we, can't go, we can't go on like this. All us normal people, whether we're Republican or whether we're Democrat, we need to start ourselves what we call normal people. And normal people need to talk to these people that are up in their White House that aren't normal and the other people that are in the Congress that aren't normal and, you know, straightening it out. There's a mess in our White House, right? The White House and our Congress and our Senate. There's a mess everywhere up there. I just can't believe how, how much BS is going on. Oh, Jeff, I, I'm so – sometimes – I just have to turn the TV off yep. and, and go read a book or just go to bed because it, I get so frustrated from watching all of this. Yeah, you and I, would just, we would be in the same armchair yelling at that TV like, what the hell is wrong with you idiots? Oh, my God. This is like driving me crazy. And, and, and here's the thing right now, Jeff. What the hell are we proving Making these people stand in food lines to get food because we won't pay them. Does that make any sense at all? No, not a bit, man. Not a bit at all. That's why I said, when you stop the government like that, why are the congressmen getting paid? They shouldn't be. Why are the be. senators getting paid? I agree. Now, I'm willing to bet you that if we put on a ballot tomorrow, when they shut the government down, all politicians' paychecks stop. Not the little guys that work in the, far, the filing department. Not the little guys that work over here as a secretary. Not the little guys that's catching the bus to come to work, the park or whatever he's working at. Stop the politicians' money. Agreed. Get no argument out of me about that. I know. If you and I, two normal people, can figure that out, why the hell can't the rest of the country... I mean, are you and I so far out of it that we don't realize that, oh, 
hush your mouth. You can't talk like that. Well, because it's it's the money. See, the money gets the politicians, uh, and and so they have to do things to make sh- sure that the people with the most money get the things that they want to have in uh, the way the legislature runs, and and that's that's the problem. So so their their behavior is largely dictated by the people who are going to give them funds to run for the next time around. And those races, as we've seen over the past few years, keep getting more and more expensive. You know, you got a Senate race where people have spent a billion dollars trying to run for Senate to make a hundred. No, does that, no, it doesn't yeah, make that's reason. what I'm saying. Yeah, to make a hundred and some thousand dollars, we're going to spend a billion bucks. Does that make any sense? Uh, nope. Where did they come up with this billion dollars to begin with? And second of all, it's how do they get to Congress or to get to Senate, and all of a sudden they go in as a guy like you and me, and next thing, well, you may be a little better off than I am, but that's what I'm trying to say is they come out next year, two years down the road, they're millionaires. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what salary? Yeah. hundred some thousand? Yeah. How do we multiply that? Is that a, is that a month? Maybe I, maybe I missed it. I thought it was supposed to be for a year, but I, maybe it's a month. But, but I don't know. Jeff, what they've done, look at Paul Ryan. He, he went in there, I think he was 26, and he's, mm-hmm. out, he's out of there now. He gets a retirement pension of a couple hundred thousand dollars a year for being Speaker of the House. And the last report I saw was he was worth somewhere around four or five million dollars. From well, you know, they go ahead. You, you know what that's all about. They vote on their own races. Is that allowed? Yeah, right. Rudy, I want to take a vote. Do you think you and I need a raise? Yeah, I do, Rudy. What do you think? Yeah, you do too? Yeah, well, let's sure. give us a raise. What do you yeah. think? Rudy? Should we take 10%? Yeah. Oh, no. Let's do 15, all right? Well, no, we can't do too high. Let's do, you know. Oh, Jesus. Okay, now who's going to vote against that? Yeah, I know. So, going to stand so. in a room full of people and say, I'm going to vote for whether you deserve a raise or not. So you're going to vote for it. But but we <laughs> but, but but we we can fix it. You see, because we got when a, when, a, when a guy like you calls me up, who I know is a conservative, yep. but but is outraged at the dumb stuff we're doing. There's hope. Yep. Because there's people out there, and I know I know one of them who's probably listening tonight. He will not accept anything anybody says unless it comes from a conservative. Which well, is which is just dumb you, because every, nobody has all the answers. Nobody's got all the answers. You're absolutely correct. And if you think you got one avenue, you know, is there one way to kill kill a, a problem? No, there's many ways to kill a problem. Yes, but you just got to get on the, uh, you know, it's got to come together. Sir, there I, used to be an old song back in the 1960s called "Come Together" by I think it was the Young Bloods. Yes. Get together and try to love one together. another right yes, now. Yes, right now. Yes, I remember. I remember that song. Ah, oh, well, I was the same age. <laughs> I, yes, like I remember that song. Yeah. Well, Rudy, thank if you, you sir. Need my help at any time. You just hollered. All you do is stand up. All you do, I listen to you every week. Hey, Jeff, call me now. <laughs> okay, Jeff. I'll be on the phone. All right. We'll thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Uh, now that is about as hopeful a call as I can ever hope to get. Because we're on different sides of the political spectrum, but we both realize that there's we cannot continue down the path that we're on right now. Let let me give you. I I think I said this maybe about a year or so ago. I, I read this in uh, uh, Robert Reich's book about the drug industry because the drug industry is absolutely ripping us off to the max, to the max. And they spend, God, carloads of money to keep the senators and congressmen in line to keep from passing legislation, which will cut some of their profits. But occasionally, they get embarrassed by investigative pieces that are done on 60 Minutes or some of the other shows and, and and then they go and they cut some of the drug prices. But let me tell you this this little thing that Robert Reich uh, reports in, in his book. 
and if you heard this before, please indulge me. One of the things that happens <clears throat> when somebody, when a company comes up with a new drug, okay, they're entitled to a patent, and that patent I think is 17 or 19 years or whatever it is. And uh, when that patent ends, people are entitled to come up with a generic drug to replace the name drug. Now, because that patent is time specific, if you, the manufacturer of that drug, can tweak the drug so as to try to create another patent, you will get another time specific period of 17 or 19 years, whatever that number is. If for some reason the government says no, Here's your regulation, folks. This is why you got to have regulation. If the, if the government says, no, that's not an adequate tweet to change the nature of the drug, and they now allow ABC company to begin to introduce a generic drug, watch this. The name manufacturer goes and buys out ABC manufacturer of the generic drug so that drug never hits the market did you hear me that's what they do so they go drop four or five million dollars in the abc's pocket to not produce the drug and then they continue to gouge you on the original name drug and we got winnie on line one yes winnie how y'all doing today okay good good Okay, what's the meaning? Of, what's the meaning of the shutdown? Could you, could you explain to me more about that? Yes, Winnie. What? What? Here's the here's the uh, thing of the shutdown. The president wants t- to have a southern border wall in in Texas in the Texas territory to stop immigrants from coming in. With his argument is that. The southern border is allowing drugs and illegal immigrants to come into our country. That is absolutely categorically untrue because the own, our own U.S. government has said most of the illegal drugs come through the legal ports of entry via trucks, cars, and in some cases boats that bring the drugs into the country. So... Now what's happened, though, is during his campaign, President uh, Trump promised that he'd build a wall. And his ego is not going to allow him to not let that happen. So he's now in a position of wanting to get $5 million to help start his wall now. Now, here's a little piece that I want you to understand, Wendy, and most people don't even understand. That $5 billion will not be build the wall. It's not enough money. Mm. That wall would cost somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 or $70 billion. But he wants that money for his wall. And what the Democrats have done is said, no. We're not going to give you money for that. We will give you border security. Now, here's what I want you to really understand, because they keep saying Democrats want open borders. Democrats don't want open borders. Democrats are fully prepared, and most people like myself believe that border security is something that we should have, but they don't want to pay for that wall, because the wall is a waste of money, and it's a dumb way to spend resources. And so what he's doing now is saying, if you don't give me my wall, I'm going to keep the government closed. Mm. That's where we are. It's a, it's, bad, it's a bad deal, ain't it? Yes, it is. It's, oh, a, very, it's a very bad deal, Winnie. People, oh, people are hurting. Yeah, it is. Uh, I said, hear that on the news. Yeah. Okay, we'll be talking. Have a good night. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
And we have, is that Greg? Yes, Greg. Good evening, sir. How are you? Love that Winnie, man. <laughs> I got something for Jeff. Okay. And Jeff, um, if you're near a chair, please sit down. Two words, regulation and deregulation. Reaganomics deregulated the airlines, yep. the railroads, yep. the pharmaceutical companies, yep. the medical facilities, hospitals, etc. cetera, yep. banks, this snafu that we went through, not snafu, this tragedy that we went through eight years ago with the banks is because they're deregulated. Reaganomics deregulated Wall Street. Yeah. Look at all of those, and I could add, I probably got a fistful of more that I could add to the list, but look at all of those entities that I just named, and tell me what's wrong with America now. And, and you know, I'm an American. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm not an Independent. I'm an American. And our politicians are killing us. Yeah. They're killing us. And Greg, listen, here's the other thing that I give Reagan credit for. Reagan, and, and it's had a lasting effect, he was able to convince a large swath of Americans that they were being fleeced by people in this country that don't want to work. That's correct. <laughs> okay. And what was 180 degrees the truth? <laughs> yeah, right, Okay. He he's he's he was able to convince them that that there's this big group of people out there that all they want to do is collect uh, money from the government and don't want to work. Oh. Yep. You know, let, let me tell you something. I, there's been a couple of, of congressmen that have done it that have taken the money that they get from SNAP and tried to live on it, and it was darn near impossible. Of course it is. It is impossible. Right. For, for a humble, lower-class citizen, it's impossible, not to mention a middle-class or upper-middle-class person. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But anyway, thank you, Greg. I appreciate you, sir. You're awesome, buddy. Thank you. Okay. And we got Jeff on line three. Yes, Jeff. Jeff, we're good. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe a word that politicians say when we say we don't need the wall. I believe the guy that stands in the uniform that's down there fighting the war against it. When uh -huh. he says we need a wall, then I sort of have to lean towards him because he's there, he's on scene, he knows what's going on, he's running that thing the best he could with as little as he's got. If he says that wall would help him, build the damn wall. Well, let, 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 me, let, me, let me just say that's faulty thinking. And I'm going to tell you why that's faulty thinking. Because we have the president who is in charge of the military, right? Along with uh, our, our legislative branch. And, and that it was so well thought out because there is hardly ever a, a colonel or general that doesn't like a war. So if, if you have the a civilian who now can sit outside of the process and say yes or no. So in, in this particular case, what they're talking about the wall, but, but Jeff, if you go look, don't take my word. I don't want you to take my word for it. There is adequate information out there that will tell you it, the drugs and the crime is not coming through the southern border. But they said the wall Obama built was, was helping tremendously. What, what I'm telling you is, if you but, go... But look, if, look, the, if the wall Obama bill helped, why, why won't this wall help? What I'm just trying to tell you is, if you did go... Did you see the wall Obama bill? I, I, I did. Saw, okay. What I'm trying to tell you is very simply this. Go do the research. I did. The, the, the crime and the drugs is not coming through the southern border. It's coming through the ports of entry. That's that's the point, Jeff. So, so there's no drugs and no no illegal guys trying to take the people across the deserts into the into the thing and the 
and the slave traders or whatever you want to call those. those the, the coyotes? Make, yeah. yeah, coyotes. They don't, hey, they can, don't come can, through there can, at all. Can I say none? No, I can't say none. That would be a stupid statement. But what I can say is that the predominant evidence as supplied by the United States government is that it does not come through the uh, southern border. It comes through the ports of entry. And who came up with those figures? The government, not me, not Rudy. But, no, 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 no. When you say government, then, then I start thinking of guys like Comey and stuff like that. And I say to no, myself, no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Guys that are bought and paid for? No. I, I mean, I, there's bought and paid for on each side, I'm sure. But what I'm trying to say here is the fact is when you go down there and you look at the wall of Obama built and how it's funneled the people to go one way, where they can, they got the troops coming, just like what the Spart- Spartacus did, or what, who was that guy that put all those Phoenicians in one little ball of wax and then attacked them, and he had only 250 people, and they won the war, you know, so they got slaughtered, but, you know, they got slaughtered eventually. But I'm just saying that, you know, if you hear from our military people that we need something, I have to lean towards helping them they need bullets for their guns they need something it, you know we've got to supply them with everything that they can to keep us safe and if they say a wall helps you know why is anybody even questioning it i mean you know it just seems it seems if, if one person or you know if, if, if 10 people are saved by this there's been you know and it was so disgruntled i am about how they wouldn't have talked to the parents that have lost all their children because of illegals coming across and doing stuff. It just breaks my heart to think that they could be that cold. Okay. Well, well, well thank you. I, you thank know, you for your call, I'm just Jeff. saying, I wish we'd just do the right thing. And if the right thing is, you know, take all this politics out of it. We need people to go down there and investigate and see what this guy's talking about. If they t- convince the general... The general, whoever he is, stands there and says, we need this. And there's other guards on guards that keep saying that we, we need this. If they don't really need it, then they should be deposed for lying. You know, but they, 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 I don't think they're lying. I really do think they need the help. Okay. That's all I've got to say. Okay. Thanks, thanks Bertie. Thanks, Jeff. And we got Jay on line one. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Jay? Yeah, okay, I can Rudy. Okay. Now, I just want to answer a couple of this before I get to answer my question about my, about the um, uh, pharmaceutical. Uh, all he has to do is check with his congressman, because he was on TV not too long ago, Brian Mask, and he said that uh, the ports of entry is where all the drugs come through. He was on, on CNN. They had, they uh, interviewed him. Yeah. And he's right. He's supposed to be our congressman right here that represents us. And so uh, I, I think this, this gentleman that was just on could just call his uh, congressman because if he don't believe you, he could, you know, Brian Mass, the last I saw had an R after his name, you know, Republican, right? Jay, it's it, that information is out there. And, I know it is. It, yeah, I know yeah. it is. It's kind of, it's kind of, you know, kind of gets you, you know, you got to, you got to stay calm and cool because, uh, you know, the, 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 the propaganda, the Fox News uh, network is really doing a job with the false, you know, with the propaganda, and it just, it's just so sad. But what I really call for is about. The drugs, the pharmaceuticals. You remember back in the, when Bush was president, they they changed the uh, the, the laws about the about drugs yes, and all of that. About yes. you couldn't they couldn't import any, they couldn't bring any yep. any drugs in. You couldn't go to Canada. They didn't want people to go to Canada to get you know to get any drugs that That's were like half or maybe you know less than what we we're paying, a lot more less than what we're paying here. Yep. The same identical uh, drug. Yeah. And it goes on. But the thing that the one that that really works is the VA. The VA has contract with these drug companies, and they, they can't go up on the price. They stay at a, a very low price, and they buy in bulk, and that's why you know they, they can do this and, sp- and, and give the uh, veteran, the veterans uh, the drugs that they need when they come to the VA ho- uh, clinics yes. and hospitals. And yes, so that's are. the contract yeah. they have. Now there's an agent, you know, the, the VA can do that. Now that's you know, why can't all of the you know Congress do you know follow the same? You know why? Because Ryan and all the rest of them that retire making millions is they pick up a lot of money from the uh, dr- from the pharma big pharma uh, uh, lobbyists that come in in there with the with bag full of 
bag full of money into uh, into the halls of Congress. Amen. And spread out the money, and then they're, they're going to sell their soul. You know, people are dying out there because they can't get you know get the the drugs they need because they can't afford them. And then you got people losing their job, and you get people working and they're not getting paid. Uh, and what are they going to do? You know, and they got you know. It goes po- on and I, on the madness. I posted something yesterday. Yeah. That, uh, you know, uh, De Blasio is making health insurance available for everybody in New York City. Yeah, I read about that. You read about that, right? In your, yeah, home, in your hometown. And he yep. said, he said, the money is there. We're mm-hmm. taking the money to make my people healthy. Right. Just, just that city just said, we're taking the money. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I got to tell you, think about that. He just said, okay. Now, in that same article, they said, now think about this number right here. 10,000 people a day are dying worldwide because they can't get health care. Right. 10,000 a day. Is that unbelievable? Yeah. I, I keep thinking about the young lady uh, <coughs> that was working down in Orlando. She had uh, she was working three jobs. She was working three jobs, and she was she couldn't she was in, she got caught in the middle. She couldn't get on the Affordable Care Act. She was like caught in the uh, you know no, in the middle there where she couldn't get on and I know. she couldn't afford the uh, you know the, the, the premium. That's right. And uh, she was supposed she had a heart condition, and she couldn't get the uh, the, the the medication that she needed to take because she couldn't afford it. And she died at the age of 34. Yeah. Yeah, that, that goes on in there. You know, I think was somebody was trying to get on uh, the governor because he, he, you know, he, he didn't want uh, to go along with uh, the Affordable Care Act or, or even, uh, you know, the... Uh, it was the Medicare expansion. Expan- but- you know, everything. He was just trying, yeah. you know, trying to just be, you know, be smart. Now, he didn't want to take money when, when Obama was giving him money back then when they wanted to extend the, uh, uh, the rail line. Yeah. I remember now, that. The government's going to pay for everything, and he turned it down because he thought, I don't, since Obama's given it to me, no, I'm not taking that money. Yeah. Jake, i got to let you go. i got calls Take backing care. up. Thank right. you. Charlie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Charlie or Chuck? Oh, is it is it Chuck? Sorry about that. Chuck. How yeah, are you, sir? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Cliff gets my name wrong every time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know your source of information that says every colonel in general, wants to go to war. Eisenhower. Eisenhower? That was a long time ago. What what did did Eisenhower warn us of? Do you remember what he said? Yeah, military-industrial complex. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I don't know of any lieutenant colonel, colonel, general, any soldier that wants to go to war. What happens when people go to war, Rudy? People die. There you go. Would you want to go to war if you're going to die? Of course not. Of course not. So it's kind of a BS answer to say every colonel and general wants to go to war. I did, no, no. I, I think most colonels and generals, uh, it is part of what it is that they do is they we train. They train. We train to go to war, yes. Okay. You have to think in that status, but you will never see. You can go to any base, and any unit is being sent, like off to the Gulf War, to Afghanistan. You will never see anybody that really, hoo-ha, wants to go. So that's faulty thinking. Okay. Yes. All right. If you want to, uh, I'll ex- uh, Yes, I, that's I, the way I think, and that's the way it is. Well, General, well, Eisenhower was a general, and he warned yes, us. Yes, he was. And he did warn us. Did he not warn us? Yeah. Okay, now and then I'm going to tell you this, Chuck. And that's a big boogaboo now. Okay, well here let me give you give you something else to think about. We have in, we're investing seven hundred billion dollars in additional industri- military hardware mm-hmm. in the military. Yeah. We spend more money on the military. Than the next 15 countries combined. Look it up. Why? I ain't, I, We're I ain't covering making... the next 15 countries around the world. <sighs> what other countries are doing all the fighting in Africa, <sighs> Afghanistan, Syria? Hmm? Okay. It's Americans. I say we pull everybody back. And Trump was right. He called them out in Europe. 
NATO ain't paying their fair share. Germany's military is on the verge of falling apart because they don't pay money. They let us do their work. So pull all our soldiers back, regroup, resupply, be ready to go kick ass when we need to go. Okay. Well, thank you, Chuck. All right. All right. And we got Sean. Sean, how are you? I'm just doing great. Uh, first off, you have such an interesting uh, wide variety of topics. <laughs> thank you. But, uh, uh, first off, the drugs coming across the border and most of them coming through the ports, you got to realize that they base that statistic on confiscation. Uh, so they're confiscating more drugs at the at the port of entries, which, by the way, is still the southern border. Uh, keep saying they're not coming across the southern border. They're coming across at the port of entry, which is on the southern border. So technically, they are coming across the southern border. Secondly, it's like other statistics. You can read them however you want. If there is, uh, say, 100 million hits of heroin coming across the southern border <coughs> and 50,000 of them got confiscated <coughs> at the port, it doesn't mean the 50,000 weren't coming across in an area that was undetected. So we can't really believe those statistics. I agree with you that if we tighten up the ports, I've watched uh, documentaries on at the ports and the um, amazing amount of stuff that they catch they're not just drugs but human trafficking also uh and that includes kidnapping for sale of prostitution and everything else and children being sold into slavery and everything else that goes on there they do an amazing job at the ports all right but they are understaffed it should be included I you don't just throw you don't throw out that. you don't throw out one thing just because you're doing something else. It should be an all-out effort. We, anybody that's going to tell me that we don't have a problem at our southern border is really denying it. It's like somebody saying there isn't climate change. Everybody knows there's climate change. What's causing it should be the discussion. All right? Okay, here. So, okay, well, stop right there, Sean, because let, yeah. let, let me tell you, here's, here's where I am with that. First off, I hate when they say... Democrats want open borders because other than one, I do not know a single Democrat that wants an open border. Everybody wants uh, security. Now, that's number one. Here's number two. Number two, go do the investigation as I have. In the last five years, illegal immigration is down. It's not up. Is, it is. is down. Okay, so, all right, let me finish now. All of a sudden now, immigration has become a crisis. Now, if immigration was going up, illegal immigration was going up, and there was evidence of that, I say, okay, I get it. But if illegal immigration is going down, why are we now in crisis mode? Can you explain that to me? Oh, yeah. First of all, you're talking about cyclical numbers, all right? Uh, and you have to go back to Reagan pretty much because that was the first deal that they tried to do on our immigration laws, all right? And, and that's the one thing that everybody misses, all right? Entering our country without proper channels is a crime, okay? And we need to stop saying that it's not. I'm a true believer, for instance, Marijuana. I don't care if somebody smokes it, but the truth is, is it's a crime still in a lot of states. You shouldn't smoke it if it's a crime. If you want to change that, you vote. I voted for medical marijuana in, in Florida, all right, uh, even though it's still a federal crime. I, that's wacko. But uh, my point being is it is going to increase again. It has to do with what's happening, for instance, in Venezuela right now. I mean, Colombia and, and Brazil and Chile are going to be overrun with uh, people fleeing that country because it's in such bad shape. And that, that country is one of the richest in the, 
in the world as far as oil reserves go. Mm -hmm. And it just comes, and I'll almost guarantee you that we're going to end up spending money in that country trying to save it somehow. We, we are going to spend $50 billion this year around the world on other countries' security. $50 billion. That's a fact. It's in, the, it's in the budget. All right. We can't spend $5 billion on our own security. Well, okay. You know, and there and are now, if you want, you, well, let me, let, me, let me tell you what my, my position to that is right there. If you want to spend $5 billion, spend $5 billion helping people get health insurance. I don't want well, you to spend. I don't want you to spend five billion listen. on a bogus behind wall. If you want to spend five billion dollars, help my American brothers and you know sisters. What? You know what? I agree with you totally, and I'm going to tell you something else. And and I hope that all of America is listening to your show streaming online because I'm going to tell you some common sense. All right. During they called them Obama phones, which isn't really the truth. That program started again with Ronald Reagan, yes. where he subsidized people to have a phone in their home so that they could get a job. All right? Sean, Somehow I, it I, I, my, my show's over. Please Somehow call that Call back next week. I am going to call back next week because we need to talk about budgetary expenses in the government and how we can afford insurance. Okay, let's do that. Please. I'm holding you yeah. to that, Sean. All right. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Well, wow, we had a wall call tonight. Yeah, we had a very exciting show. Folks, I'd like to thank you for listening to the African American scene. God bless and be safe, and I'll see you next Wednesday right here for the African American scene. The African American scene with Rudy Howard, brought to you by Howard Insurance in Port St. Lucie. Tune in every Wednesday night at 6.05 right here on WPSL Digital 1590.